Hey, it's about time I blew a gasket today. A guilty pleasure of mine is talking about video game console cases. I don't want to say guilty. This is just all pleasure. I find the design differences and what all these console manufacturers do to make them uh, stand apart from not only their previous generation, but the competition as well, uh, to just be really fascinating. One of the most unique deviations from the norm in recent memory was the Xbox One's case. This is definitely an interesting little bugger. It's very similar to a standard Blu-ray case, but it's all its own. It's much more angular, green. The side here is entirely gray with the Xbox One logo and the game logo. And then on the inside, well, they're just trying to be different. I actually have no idea why they decided to put the game disc on this side and uh, this part is reserved for the manual. Um, maybe it's to just kind of stabilize the front cover a little more because that's like the most important part of of the game box is, is the front cover. So like maybe having the, the disc slot here makes this part a lot more uh, not fragile. I have no idea. I mean, it, it's fine. It does the job, but I'm just kind of confusing. I mean, if we want to practically look at this, uh, most of the time, you know, you're going to be uh, gripping the case from the bottom here and uh, pulling it forward with this hand. So this hand's gonna be busy, which means this hand can do that. But th then again, you can do this, but like, I, I don't know. I'm just trying to make sense of this. But something I wanna talk about is uh, the wackiness of the cases throughout the Xbox One generation and uh, currently as well, because you know, the Xbox One generation, even though it's kind of sort of over, it's really not because the Xbox Series X and S kind of are just the Xbox One 2.0. It's like the Xbox One just specked up. You know, the dashboard is pretty damn similar. 99% of Xbox One games run on Xbox Series X. Uh, like, the only ones that don't work are, like, Kinect games. I don't know, not Shape Up. But anyways, this is a standard Xbox One game. Uh, I will say, uh, they, they started to do some wacky little extra things added here and there. Uh, like, uh, these ones have Xbox One <laughs> down here. Uh, as well as up there. When it's an Xbox One console exclusive, they, they put it right there. They also have all this extra random junk saying how it's Xbox One X enhanced, HDR, 4K. That's all fine. I'm just always a little confused as to why they have to specify it's Xbox One down here. Like, I don't get that. But that might be because Microsoft introduced Xbox 360 backwards compatibility with the Xbox One. Of course, it was a bit limited. They had to go on a game by game basis. So, uh, you know, they would go to these game publishers, uh, ask them like, hey, do you have any games that you'd be willing to, uh, you know, make backwards compatible on the Xbox One? They have to go through a whole rigmarole of that. Of course, that was a little lame because that didn't mean they could make the entire 360 library backwards compatible. But what that did mean is that because they had to go one game at a time pretty much to get these games on Xbox One, uh, they could take their time with it and make sure that the games actually ran pretty damn good on Xbox One. And with this being the generation full of remasters from that generation anyways, uh, some games didn't really get remasters, and the Xbox One backwards compat version was pretty much as good as you were gonna get on console. So, they did this. I mean, it's kind of cute. Yes, they just re-released Xbox 360 games in these Xbox One-esque cases, uh, with both logos at the top here, Xbox One and Xbox 360. On the inside, this was literally just the Xbox 360 game. I mean, it makes sense. You re-release these games for cheap, like 20 bucks a pop. Uh, you advertise, hey, you can play this game on your Xbox 360 or your Xbox One, but you put it in an Xbox One case, so then people don't pass it up like, oh, that's an old ass game, who cares? It's a pretty smart move in my opinion. And honestly, these are kind of cool. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't mind like trying to find a bunch of these one day and just try and get, get every single Xbox 360 game that got re-released an Xbox One case. But something that they did here is that they just label it on the spine as Xbox, which does make sense. This is for Xbox consoles. It works on 360 and One. Uh, but it does kind of make me question as somebody who has Xbox One games and Xbox 360 games, where the hell do I put this? And to make it even more confusing, where the hell do I put this? Fallout 3 was a weird one because uh, they released this version uh, of the game, which came in an Xbox 360 case, uh, but 
had kind of branding that was similar to an Xbox One, uh, but at the same time, wasn't really. This is just weird. Though this wasn't the first time that an Xbox 360 uh, type case had just Xbox on the side. The Burger King games did a similar thing uh, where those worked on the original Xbox and the Xbox 360. So uh, on the sides and also on the front, they just said Xbox. Uh, so uh, this whole thing that <laughs> Microsoft is doing, uh, they've been doing ever since the, the 360 days. But this is just bizarre. I'm sure they've done it with a couple other games, but Fallout 3 is the main one that I've noticed uh, in this style of case. And these ones I can deal with. These are kind of cool. This one is just like this this ugly ass oddity. What the hell is it? I hate it, but I kind of love it. Obviously, these are done on the cheap. The Xbox logo here uh, looks like it was painted with white out, uh, whereas like normally it's kind of this shiny metallic look. And uh, oftentimes uh, with these cases, I find that the Xbox One and 360 logos uh, look a little sketchy, just a little chicken scratchy, but they do the job. These were oftentimes just 20 bucks a pop. And uh, once again, I think this is a very smart way uh, to go about things. Uh, kind of have uh, these old games get played more because they look like new games. Uh, and uh, also for people who just owned a 360, uh, you know, hey, it kept a lot of 360 games on the shelf. Uh, but once again, keep in mind, these were 360 games backwards compatible on Xbox One. They weren't Xbox One versions of these games, even if a game like Bioshock Infinite here uh, actually has an Xbox One style header on the disc. They actually reprinted the disc. But keep that in mind because uh, uh, this tactic was done to a uh, confusing degree in some cases. Rayman Legends. Uh, yeah, this is a bit of an oddball one. So uh, this game originally released on uh, 360, PS3, Wii U, all of that in September of 2013. And then in February of 2014, it got a PS4 and Xbox One release. But for some reason, I guess Ubisoft made the Xbox 360 version backwards compatible with the Xbox One. Uh, which, which is kind of just like a, that, that's a, that's a cheap way to build up your backwards compatible list. Uh, I, I found that <laughs> they did that a couple times where, uh, they made 360 games backwards compatible in Xbox One that, uh, also got Xbox One releases. Like, I think Call of Duty Ghosts was on there, which that's kind of cool. That's kind of silly. I think that's kind of fun. But at the same time, I think that's a waste of time. However, that does make it so then, uh, if you only bought the 360 version and you never upgraded to the Xbox One game, uh, you know, making Rayman Legends, for example, backwards compatible, meant you didn't have to buy your <laughs> the Xbox One version. You could just pop your 360 game in and play it on your Xbox One, which is, you know, that that's nice. But they re-released Rayman Legends in this format. Uh, which means, uh, yeah, this is the Xbox 360 game, and this is the Xbox One game. And I feel like that makes it kind of tricky to pick up, uh, the specifically Xbox One version of the game. It just confuses things, where these are two separate versions of the game. Uh, now to be fair, you know, it's a 2D platformer. So it's like, are you really missing out on much by getting the 360 version instead of the uh, native Xbox One version? It's kind of like when I see them put out PS5 versions and PS4 versions of games like, like, like the Ninja Turtles uh, Cowabunga Collection. Like, like, why do you need a PS5 disc for that? <laughs> what possibly is going to be different in the PS5 native port of that? Like, just put the PS4 disc in. But still, there are going to be some minor differences across these two versions of the game. Uh, not enough to the point where I think, like, wow, they were really swindling us here. But I just think this is a very strange case <laughs> right here. Uh, though, uh, to be fair, I think, uh, you know, Ubisoft, it, it, it's, it's a smart business decision. Makes it so then you can keep selling Rayman Legends uh, for the Xbox One while also selling it for the Xbox 360. You only have to have one Xbox version on the shelf, so, you know, fine. But, uh, yeah, just a little funky. However, not all was right in the Xbox case realm when 2020 hit. 
because the Xbox Series X came out. Uh, so of course, you're gonna need new cases for the Xbox Series X. Like you think they'd give a damn. An interesting setup here. So uh, since the Xbox Series X was more so like uh, taking the Xbox One and upgrading it for the next generation rather than like an entirely new generation in of itself, uh, Microsoft wanted to commit to this idea of, uh, hey, like let, let, let's just make it so then this is the Xbox ecosystem. All the games will work on Xbox Series X. Uh, so, uh, you know, if it's an Xbox One game, if an Xbox Series X game, whatever, we'll just label these as Xbox games. And you just gotta see on the package, like, oh, this will work on my Xbox One as well as my Series X, but, uh, more often than not, any game on the shelf is gonna work on an Xbox Series X. So, they kept the same exact case design, uh, now using this little banner that used to be used for uh, the Xbox console exclusive logo, uh, now being used to tell you which Xbox consoles this is compatible with. I don't think this is a horrible idea. It's a little bland, uh, you know, the exact same case design as uh, the Xbox One, though uh, now uh, the logo is a little different. Actually, it seems like it uses a different shade of gray entirely, uh, so, uh, yeah, that's a little annoying if you have a bunch of Xbox One games already and you got an Xbox Series X. So uh, putting your games all on the shelf, uh, <laughs> they're gonna look a, a little weird, but nothing too crazy. This is one of those like case upgrades where it's not a big deal. Microsoft did this a couple times with the 360 library where uh, they would like very slightly change how the uh, header looked and how the uh, Xbox ball looked. But uh, overall, like, like it was barely distinguishable at a glance. However, now it's pretty interesting how it genuinely just says Xbox. Uh, any game that's optimized for the Series X has this little sticker on the top. And they all have the white logo now, kind of like the 360 and uh, Xbox One combo titles. Uh, but that doesn't stop a couple games from still using the Xbox One cases. Yeah, that's a little weird. This came out after this game, but it's whatever. Uh, I think Microsoft just wants you to combine all these games. Just put them on one ass, big ass, stinky ass shelf. And uh, you know what? These don't look too awful bad next to each other. Just always kind of confused me on like where to put certain titles, but you know what? I can live with this, but Microsoft couldn't. Yes, even though this was the case design Microsoft had when the Series X launched, uh, just one year later, this, this case design was introduced one year after the Series X launch, we got a brand new one. Uh, and uh, yeah, it looks pretty similar, but it's uh, pretty much entirely different. Yeah, we no longer have this plastic header. It's just all around, you know, just the, the artwork fills up the entire front. But they, uh, they try to make it at least look a little in line with the original Xbox One titles, where we have this green header uh, on, on the top, uh, which is just, just, just printed on, just part of the paper. Uh, but it, it's not even the same length as the original header. So uh, it kind of uh, makes us blend in, but not at the same time. But yeah, now we have this slanted design uh, with the Xbox logo there and all the systems this is compatible with uh, listed uh, right there, which I think this is a slick design. I think this works really well. I like how bold the console names are here. It's definitely a lot more easily understandable than, than this, which feels like they kept chipping away at throughout the generation, just adding random garbage. Oh, this is Xbox and let's put the console names there. Let's put a sticker right there, even though this portion was used for a console exclusive when we put the Xbox One logo down there for whatever goddamn reason. And then let's put all the extra little stats right there. Uh, if it requires internet down there, even though they used to say Xbox One down there, uh, blah, 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 blah. This case design just ended up feeling like a mess. Uh, it, it, it was a functional mess, but it just ended up feeling like a mess over time. This new setup is a lot more refined. It feels a lot more well thought out. Uh, I just think it's interesting they waited until a year into the Series X's life to introduce Series X cases, or, or pretty much the uh, current Xbox generation cases moving forward. But yeah, those are the Xbox cases from the Xbox One generation moving forward. Uh, it's definitely been a very wacky little experience buying Xbox One games because uh, you never know what you're gonna get. I can say that again. But yeah, just what a weird case history here. Uh, but strangely enough, uh, it doesn't really bother me that much. It, it's just it's just weird. They just had a weird history with cases on the Xbox One. Uh, but you know what? These are just always kind of interesting cases. 
uh, to me. I feel like they've always been interesting mainly because uh, Xbox is, is mostly a digital platform now. I'm gonna get most games just via Game Pass instead of uh, buying physical physical copies. I mean, I went to a store and I saw a physical copy of Redfall. That's fucked up. But I guess because I play most of my Xbox games digitally, uh, it makes these cases a little more uh, wacky and kind of cute to me. They're just these cluster fucks. Like I said, it just felt like they just kept on adding shit to them. Uh, but what what they currently have, I like this design quite a lot. Uh, it, it, it's kind of confusing to uh, think about like, okay, like, do I just keep adding these to my Xbox One games on the shelf? Or do I just have Xbox One games and Series X games and, and the 360 games on the Xbox One just all in one place? Uh, that's just what I'm doing right now because I genuinely just don't really know what else to do because like yeah This is an Xbox Series X game, but it's also still an Xbox one game. So I don't fucking know in my opinion However, you organize your Xbox games uh, really says a lot of who you are Like do you put these with the Xbox 360 games or the original Xbox games your silence is deafening coward?